when he was narrating it, he says that Umkulu Jokkiliza said, if you don't do these miracles to me, I'd rather die, basically. Sleep here, rather I wake up dead, fallen from this cliff. So it gave me that idea, Uti. maybe he's saying, if he doesn't see power, because that's anointing if you think about it. If he doesn't see that in his life, then he'd rather not be a big my name is Ayan Dambanjo, aka the Dream Master, and this is the Christian Pull Up. So today I'm just going to be reacting to a video of a gentleman by um, the name Apostle M. Mumalo. The reason why I was interested in this particular video is because he basically um, speaks about the history of uh, the famous, one of uh, the people that are regarded as God's generals uh, in KZN, Job Kaliza. Um So if you are familiar with the history of... Um, people who had a very instrumental role in um, the church in KZN, you would most definitely know or have heard about the job Khaliza, what job Khaliza. So um, I was interested in, in, in hearing that history. I'm not sure how much he's going to share in this video, but yeah, I'm just going to go in and listen to Apostle M. Mumala. I'm also not very familiar with him, but yeah, I uh, got this on YouTube. I'm watching it on YouTube, so let's see what he has for us. And if you, sorry, before I start, if you have any material on, especially the so-called Big Five, uh, uh, God's generals of KZN, you know, Bob Job Kaliza, Babu William Duma, who. Bob Nicholas Pengu, Babu Ngiti, and one that I just heard about recently, Babu Heri Mgati. So if you know any, anything of any material, especially if it's videos, I love watching videos, but even if it's audio, I'd love to listen to those sermons. So if you have any material like that, just share it with me, and uh, I'd love to, you know, watch it, react to it. Okay, let's go straight into the man. Yes, Rabulu. Rabu Magune, to win her hands, the Catherine Hanadis, who was a church on the engine of Allah. So, yeah, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the Okay. So, so this looks like it looks like this is some um Thanksgiving ceremony. Oh, what do you can be visual and gentle? Pastoral care. What what do what is it called? When they give to a pastor or give to a leader in the church. Yeah. It looks like it's something like that. So and it sounds like uh that there's a grandmother there who's sitting, I'm sure you see. Ngati yeah, she's getting blessed or whatever. She looks very old. And yeah, he sounds like he's the keynote speaker in that event. Okay. 
See the grandmother there. Yeah, shame. Not to we are zela, not zela, shame. Okay, it's like they're in a tent somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like this is the part I want to hear. Sounds like this is where he's going to talk about the <laughs> is if if you can hear what he's talking about now he's saying the first time Ezra he heard about the Senem Kiliza. It was a player who was playing for Chiefs, very popular player. And he's talk, giving a background of uh, what uh, the sport was like back in the days in South Africa during apartheid. You know, the apartheid South Africa, it uh, disadvantaged a lot of black teams. And therefore, our white teams were very good at that time. And he was speaking about how, yeah, that particular team school of portuguese players but it was very good you know it was beating all the black teams and it sounds like chiefs with this particular player beat that team Probably wasn't born. Never had it. Lucitano. Do you know about it? Share in the comments. Okay. So the player is Cecil Tillis. Okay. Just check out and do some research on that player. Just <laughs> Second <laughs> <laughs> Zina, 
Now he's starting to speak about the man of the moment, um, Babu Job Kilis. Yeah, saying that the first time he had the surname was in soccer, but when he got saved, he also heard about the surname, and he's saying that this guy uh, was. Um, moving with God and did a lot of, God did a lot of miracles through him. Okay, we've heard. Yes. Okay. So according to Babu Apostle Numalo, um Babu Job Mkul Job Kiliza was the eldest, not just by age, but spiritually. He's the one who, uh, if I could say, gave birth or taught or mentored or had an influence on William Duma. And William Duma did the same for uh, Nicholas Bing. And then Nicholas Bing, it went on to uh, Bob Richard and Geet. All right, so that sounds like it's the order. So he's seeing the first one, the first one to be seen doing all these miracles, moving with the Lord. As Babu dropped this in case that end that is. Okay, so you see, it sounds like this family, Akulumagoyo, is the family of Babu Uchop Kriza. So he's saying that you guys can share more details because you are family. So it sounds like they have more information. Okay. It's nice to know that there, there's a trace to the family. I'd love to meet the family as well and learn more about uh, Babu Jopkiliza firsthand, you know, from a family member. Maybe they have more material. We'd love to learn from that material. It's very useful. I would say um, it's very inspiring. Okay. The edge of the cliff. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Hold it right there. So he's saying for this man to have or to move with God, he had this encounter with God. He actually went to a cliff, tall cliff somewhere, slept at the edge of the cliff, slept like sleeping, sleeping, proper sleeping, not lying down. He slept there for the night and he said, if you are not going to be, uh, God is going to move with me, he's going to do the miracles that you speak about in the Bible. Let it be that I fall as I sleep. I should find myself fallen from this cliff and die. I don't know what you think of that. Do you think he 
is, is it not maybe tempting the Lord? Um, or is it afraid? I don't know. I don't know. What do you what, what do you think of that statement? Maybe share some comments. Tell me what you think of that particular chest. Like, do you think it's how, what do you feel about it? Let me not try to influence your thoughts on it, but what do you feel about that particular statement? Ubuti both the killers that did that. Is it something that's advisable for a believer to do? Or is it a form of testing the Lord? The Bible said we shouldn't test the Lord. You know. Yeah, get back to me. yeah so you see he just emphasized that point <laughs> that's making me that's making me think yeah he emphasizes the point with the um yeah he did tell god that i'd rather wake up dead falling off this cliff if you're not going to do the things that you say you do in your word then it's not worth me living i'd rather die right okay let's carry on <laughs> Okay, I'll be honest. I haven't heard much about a prophet. He says prophet Hermgat from Church of God. Uh, if you have any material any information on it, please give me a link, post something to me. I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, so you see the lineage, um, if I may call it, uh, how he breaks it down, who who was first. and Yeah, it's very interesting <laughs> because um, I remember in Bible, when I was in Bible college, at some point, um, the question raised, not a question, a statement that was um, mentioned about tracing your your salvation path to Jesus. So if you had to say you check your salvation, Uti, you got saved who was ministering to you or who was a uh, spiritual father or your, yeah, basically the person who harvested your soul or the influence to your ministry. Can you trace it back to Jesus? Do you think you could have something like that? That's why I enjoy studying church history and um, African and South African church history. I think it gives one a, 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 an opportunity to try to trace back who came from who and who came from who. So I would also like anyone who has information about Ubab Job Kris. Where did he get saved? You understand? Because we hear about him having this encounter with God. Him actually um, having this uh, test 
or this challenge to God. We had this encounter and that way they say for he to return back working uh, miracles. God working miracles through him. We hear that it's actually he, had, he was already saved. So I'd like to know if on your side you know where did he get saved? Who, which church was he coming from? We know that he he was in a full gospel, I think, full gospel. But if you have any information of where he got saved, who was the preacher or the missionary, we'd love that information. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It sounds like it sounds like uh, there are other pastors in their midst and um one or a kill is on or that being and he's basically saying he's excited that in a family where there was such a giant in the faith, there is someone else who sort of uh, embarking on the same path, both Gabi and Unaga. So he's, he's saying he's really excited by that. That, uh, the, yeah, they're still keeping the faith, basically. <laughs> What do you think of this thought of Uglanda man? That's the point I was trying to raise earlier on. You know, saying you're going to put God in a corner. You're going to go into a mountain. I know that's very popular in case that a lot of um, people in the faith are known to have gone to the mountain to fast for 30, 40 days and done some extreme, extreme things and returned moving in power and uh, authority, you know, uh, God performing miracles to them and, and, and so forth. What is your thought about that? Uh, do you think it's a thing? that a believer should pursue in order to see the power uh, of God in their life, in their lives, or, um, I don't know. How, I mean, I, th I, I think every believer would like to see the power of God in their life. They'd love to see miracles happening as the Bible says. And if you look at scripture, scripture says, and these things shall follow them who believe in my name. And it mentions all these things. Casting off demons, praying for the sick. It speaks about the miracles. It says we'd even do greater things. Jesus says we'd do greater things. Because he's going to the Father. And it sounds like um, it's something that was a gift. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to understand because after these grade five, if I may call them that, God forbid, um, we are not praising men, but for the sake of communication, this big five servants of God well-known, popular for spreading the gospel and they did remarkable things. I, I will not take away anything they did. They really 
left a mark. But I just want to understand, Wuti, what approach is a believer supposed to take when it comes to them taking a pattern from Abumku Labubaba? Should we also be going to cliffs and lying down there? Should we be fasting for like intense fasting? Should we be doing these extreme things in order to see the power of God? It's a question. <laughs> Lama <laughs> He, in a way, is going back to what I was saying. You see, now he's saying the problem that we have these days is people are not seeking God, people are seeking for anointing. I'm not sure if it's contradicting what I was asking before or it's in line because he goes back and says that these gentlemen. They will never preach and uh, emphasize on seeking anointing and about the power of God. They emphasized living for God. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's just me. Because I'm for that 100%. And I agree. I've seen it myself. Wuti. These days, people will take towels and they will want double portions. They will carry a, a pastor's Bibles. They they do a lot of strange things trying to get anointing. They will go from church to church. Wherever there is a minister, they think God is using powerfully. They leave their churches to go there because they feel like they're going to draw or tap into that person's anointing. But he's saying that these guys are not doing that. And I, I, I'll agree. I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of and uh, I read or I listened to a, a book on the net about William Do. I did not get that sense, Uguti, they were seeking for anointing, hungry for power, but they're seeking God. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe when he went to the mountain, was seeking God. It's just that the apostle. When he was narrating it, he says that Umkul Job Kiliza said, if you don't do these miracles to me, I'd rather die, basically. Sleep here, rather I wake up dead, fallen from this cliff. So it gave me that idea, Uti. Maybe he's saying, if he doesn't see power, because that's anointing if you think about it. If he doesn't see that in his life, then he'd rather not be a believer. But now he's going back and he's saying that above Job Kaliza, they emphasized on living for God, not on anointing, which I can agree with because I've listened to some of their material. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit... I don't know where, 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 where. But my question still stands. Should people be going and doing these extreme things 
to to get e, 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 anointing or the power of God or to see miracles and, and signs and wonders in their ministry? Or should they just be seeking God? Maybe it's my misunderstanding. Maybe what he was saying is when people go there, maybe every time I hear it, I'm not hearing it correctly. Maybe when people go to the mountain and do these extreme things, they're actually seeking God. I at least because I I, I love I, I love these um, ministers of God, God bless their souls. I I am hoping that is 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 the approach. That was the approach. I'm hoping that that is what it was. Yeah. But anyway, if you know more about it, just share and comment in the comment section.